Hi friends, good morning. I want to start off today's lesson with a game. I'm going to say a category and I want you to think of something within that category that starts with the letter B, okay? So I'll give you an example. If I said girl's name, then you would think of a name that starts with B and it would be for a girl. So I might use Miss Bethany's name because her name starts with a B. Okay, so here's another one. How about, remember you're using the letter B, an animal. I thought of beaver. What about a breakfast food? I thought of bagel. What about a movie title? I'm not sure that I can think of one. I don't I hope you thought of one because I didn't. What about a name of a city? I'm thinking of Baltimore that Miss Bethany talked about last week. What about a fruit? That one's easy, banana. Uh, what about a boy's name? I'm thinking of Ben. Um, but what about things in the ocean? It starts with a B. I don't know that I can think of anything, like maybe a ball if you threw the ball in the ocean. <laughs> Uh, what about a color? That's easy. Blue. Um, what about something you treasure that starts with B? I would say the Bible because we need to treasure God's word. In the story that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about two kings of Judah, the southern part of Israel, Hezekiah and Josiah, and they ruled in a way that showed that they treasured God's word. To start off our lesson, let's review our big picture question and answer. How did God plan to fix what sin broke? The answer, before he created the world, God planned to send the Messiah to save sinners. God knew all along that we would reject him and that we would choose sin. He created the world anyway because he is glorious and loving. When Adam and Eve sinned, he did not abandon the world, but he continued his plan to fix the brokenness caused by sin. In our story today, God's people were living in two kingdoms, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. In both kingdoms, the effects of sin were causing all kinds of problems. We've been talking about the northern kingdom of Israel, but last week we started talking about the southern kingdom, and we learned that the prophet Isaiah told about the Messiah 700 years before Jesus was born. God saw his people's sin and brokenness, and he refused to leave them there. Despite God's good promise, the kings of Judah were still leading the people away from God to worship false gods and idols. That's where our story picks up today. It's called Hezekiah and Josiah, and it's found in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 29 and chapters 34 and 35. Let's watch our Bible story video to find out more. The southern kingdom of Judah had many kings. Most of the kings were evil. They did not follow God. Kings like Ahaz set up places to worship idols, and the people forgot about God. When King Ahaz died, his son Hezekiah became king. Hezekiah was not like his father. Hezekiah did what was right. He trusted God and obeyed his commands. Hezekiah made some changes around the kingdom. He led the people to worship God again, and God blessed him. After Hezekiah died, his son Manasseh became king. Manasseh was the most evil king of Judah. He set up the idols Hezekiah had destroyed and led the people to worship false gods. He ruled for 55 years. Then his son, Ammon, became king. He was evil too, and he ruled for two years. Then his son, Josiah, became king. Josiah was just eight years old when he became king. He was a good king, like his ancestor, David. Josiah lived in a way that pleased God. When Josiah was a teenager, he started to follow God. Then he made some changes around the kingdom. Josiah decided to get rid of the things that were not pleasing to God. He got rid of idols and the places where people worshiped false gods. 
When Josiah was a young man, he wanted to repair the Lord's temple. As the temple was being repaired, the high priest found a very important document. I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple, the high priest said. When King Josiah heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. God is very angry with us, Josiah said. Our ancestors did not obey God. A prophetess brought a message from God. God said, I'm going to punish the people of Judah because they turned away from me and worshiped other gods. But God had a special message for Josiah. Because you were humble and were sorry for your sin when you heard the law, you will die in peace. You will not see the punishment I am bringing on the people. Josiah went to the temple and read the words of the law to all the people. Then Josiah promised to follow God and obey him like the book of the law said to do. The people at the temple also agreed to follow God and obey him. As long as Josiah was king, the people followed God and obeyed him. Hezekiah and Josiah loved God and wanted to follow his commands. They wanted God's people to love God and obey the law too. When Jesus came to earth, he fulfilled the law by obeying it perfectly. Most of Judah's kings were evil men, but God raised up some kings who loved him. Hezekiah was one of those good kings. He loved God and he led the people to love God too. But sadly, when Hezekiah died, his son became another evil king, as did Hezekiah's grandson. But Hezekiah's great-grandson was different. Josiah, though only a boy when he became king, he was eight. Some of you are eight. He went on to be a very good king who passed a lot of laws to lead the people back to God. But despite all the good things that Josiah did, God's people would eventually turn away from him again. Hezekiah and Josiah helped lead the people back to God, but good kings were not enough. God's people needed a perfect king. They needed a savior. You see, God had a plan to fix the damage caused by sin. Good kings passing good laws to help people obey God was not the end of God's plan. That was just one small step toward the completion of God's plan. How did God plan to fix what sin broke? Remember, before he created the world, he planned to send the Messiah to save sinners. Jesus was the only answer that would solve sin's problem. Hezekiah and Josiah loved God and wanted to follow his commands. They wanted God's people to love God and obey the law too. When Jesus came to earth, he fulfilled the law by obeying it perfectly. Then, despite having no sin, Jesus died on the cross, just like a sinner should die, just like we should die. But Jesus paid the penalty for our sin. And when he rose again on the third day, it proved that his sacrifice was enough to defeat sin and death once for all. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will be forgiven and receive new life from God. Remember our key passage, if my people who bear my name, humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7.14 Let's watch our key passage video to help us learn it. If my people who bear my name Humble themselves, pray and seek my face If my people who bear my name Humble themselves, pray and seek my face Then turn, turn, turn from their evil ways
comes from the time right after Solomon finished building the temple. God reminded Solomon that even though the people would not be faithful to him, he would love them and restore them whenever they called out to him. He remains faithful even when we do not. He sent Jesus to rescue us while we were his enemies because we were in sin. Let's pray and thank God for saving us. Dear God, thank you for having a plan for sending Jesus to save us. Thank you for the good leaders that you give us to help us, to lead us, to make right decisions. But God, I pray that you would help each of us to choose to do right and to follow you individually. Because sometimes we have leaders that don't tell us to do the right thing. So I pray that you would give us wisdom, that you would give us a desire to love and serve you every day of our life, God. And I pray that when we fail and we choose to do wrong, that you would help us to see the wrong in our lives, that we would confess our sin to you and ask for your forgiveness, because we know you are faithful to forgive us and that you never stop loving us. Thank you so much for your love and for your good plans for us. In Jesus' name.